Hello, my name is Jay Tallwalker, and I'm a hepatologist uh, in the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at the Mayo Clinic. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about a rare but very important chronic liver disease called primary sclerosing cholangitis. Uh, the reason that this disease is important is that currently we don't have any effective medical therapy to halt disease progression so that we can avoid complications such as liver failure or uh, bile duct cancer which can affect uh, the majority of these patients. Primary sclerosing cholangitis is considered an autoimmune condition and it's primarily diagnosed in uh, individuals who are between the ages of 40 and 50 years and among patients with inflammatory bowel disease uh, the most common uh, form that's seen in PSC is ulcerative colitis. Uh, this is where it's thought PSC is an autoimmune condition, but we also see patients who don't have inflammatory bowel disease, and so other causes of PSC, such as infection or ischemia, are probably related uh, to the formation of this condition. Another reason why this disease is important is that it often develops silently, as most chronic liver diseases do. Uh, typically, we don't suspect this disease unless blood tests are done suggesting abnormalities in liver enzymes such as alkaline phosphatase. Uh, much less commonly, patients present with symptoms such as itching or jaundice, which is yellowing of the eyes or skin, um, and therefore investigations are done to rule out uh, that the possibility of having PSC, especially in someone with inflammatory bowel disease. The way we make this diagnosis is by doing a test called cholangiography. Uh, in years past, we would rely on endoscopy or invasive techniques to uh, visualize the biliary tree to determine if PSC was present. More commonly these days, we use a technique uh, involving MRI called MRCP. Uh, this is a, a nice way of non-invasively imaging the biliary tree uh, in order to identify changes that we see consistent with PSC. Um, most patients, as I said, are asymptomatic, but on occasion people will go on to develop some complications. Uh, the most common ones include uh, itching, as I mentioned, and that's typically related to strictures in the large bile ducts, which can be treated with endoscopy. Uh, some patients develop infections inside the bile duct, which is usually in the setting of a blockage from a stricture or a stone in the bile duct, and this is also treated with endoscopy as well as antibiotics. The most feared complication of this disease is called cholangiocarcinoma, which is another term for bile duct cancer. It can present at the time of diagnosis of PSC, and up to 40% of patients will have a diagnosis of cholangiocarcinoma within two years of being told about PSC. This condition is really difficult to diagnose because it looks just like PSC, and it takes a number of studies, including imaging tests, as well as brushings and biopsies of the bile duct from endoscopy to try to really find the, uh, the presence of bile duct cancer. Many times patients have to have these tests repeatedly until we can identify the disease because it's so difficult to find. Um, in addition to bile duct cancer, patients can go on to develop cirrhosis or liver failure from this disease. Uh, and again, in the setting of not having any effective medical treatment, the only option for these people uh, is liver transplantation. Fortunately, liver transplant is really effective in this disease, and patients with PSC who have a liver transplant actually have the best uh, long-term survival out of any of the liver diseases that we transplant uh, around the world. Here at Mayo Clinic, we have uh, had a history of seeing a number of patients with PSC and have uh, taken the lead in both uh, developing clinical trials as well as diagnostic tests for the disease. Uh, we've also done a large number of transplants in this disease and have uh, extensive experience in, in following patients before and after transplant. Uh, we see several hundred patients a year with this condition. And therefore, when we see patients with this disease, uh, it's really through a team or collaborative approach. Um, a number of patients come here for second opinion, uh, but primarily a, a number of patients are referred with uh, a question about liver disease and ultimately a diagnosis of PSC is then reached. As part of our clinical uh, work and efforts in PSC, uh, a large number of investigators and studies have also emerged uh, in the setting of looking at research on the disease to not only improve the way we diagnose it, but also uh, to uh, find effective treatments for it before cancer or liver transplant uh, is needed. We have been involved historically in the um, development and conduct of clinical trials looking at drug therapies for PSC. 
What's exciting about this field now is that uh, many of us feel it's one of the last, if not the last, major uh, liver disease that doesn't have effective treatment. Therefore, there's been a lot of renewed or recent interest in this disease, and a number of therapies are being developed for use in patients with PSC. And we've continued to have the opportunity and privilege to uh, partner with uh, companies and other uh, organizations interested in developing drug therapy uh, to participate in these studies and enroll patients that we see here uh, to try to find effective treatments for the condition.